Well, uh, Christmas is the theme of uh, our service this morning, certainly, and uh, we've been working through uh, some of the G's of Christmas. And uh, today, as Kylie and the girls mentioned, we're talking about giving and uh, receiving as well, giving and getting. And uh, I wonder, um, do you enjoy getting gifts at Christmas? Do you enjoy opening up presents and, uh, and having a look at the gifts I certainly do. Yeah, I, it's a really um, special time uh, in our family. Uh, we we uh, we have a a matriarch who loves to give gifts. So Kylie's mum will go all out, and uh, she's probably been shopping and uh, and and getting gifts for the family uh, for the last couple of months. And so often at our uh, Christmas family gathering, uh, there is. Many, many gifts and uh, lots and lots of wrapping. And, and one of the things that often happens at our family uh, is that uh, the, the wrapping all gets uh, scrunched up and then it turns into an all-out war in the lounge room where everyone is just pegging wrapping at each other and it just starts, you know, with someone just throwing a little, a little one to someone here and then they respond and then it just escalates out of control where this wrapping is just being pegged at everyone in the lounge room. And so gift, giving gifts is a, is a great uh, experience and uh, not just throwing rubbish at each other, but uh, there's something special about, you know, giving gifts and, uh, and receiving a gift and, and opening it up and enjoying that present. And so um, I, I often remember as a kid, you know, asking the question, oh, what did you get at Christmas? You know, what, what did you get at Christmas? What did you get for your present? You know, and asking around as a kid what gifts different people got. As an adult, though, I tend to find myself asking the question more, did you get a gift at Christmas? Not what is your gift? Did you actually get a gift? And, and often you can open up your gifts at Christmas and, and find it's... Uh, another set of socks and jocks to get you through till the next year, and, uh, and that's okay. But there's something special about unwrapping uh, presents, and this morning I'd like us to uh, dig into God's Word and unwrap some gifts that we find in the Gospel. Um, and so our Christmas uh, giving of gifts often uh, is, is, originates from um, stories of giving gifts, and uh, some of you might know the, the famous sort of story of St. Nicholas who, uh, you know, was in a situation where he was in a community, uh, many people around him in great need, and uh, he, he responded from uh, the gospel and, and a response of giving gifts to those who are in need. And so our gift giving um, has a history of, of many, many centuries uh, giving gifts and many different stories around that. But ultimately, giving gifts to each other comes back to the greatest gift of all. And that's what we're going to focus on this morning. And that, of course, is when the Father gave his one and only Son to redeem a world back to himself. So this morning, we're not going to be opening up our Bibles to the Magi and their gifts that they brought to Jesus. But instead, we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles there, I'd love you to open up with me to Romans chapter 8. And towards the end of that chapter, we're going to be digging into some gifts and unwrapping some gifts around the gospel that we see in the gospel. So it would be great just to read this passage together and then we'll have a look at it. So Romans chapter 8, we're going to start in verse 32 through till the end of the chapter. You will recognise these verses, they're quite famous. I was talking with Josie this morning and she's got them highlighted in her Bible. Um, so feel free to get your pen out if you wish and, uh, and, and take some notes. Let's read together. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't know about you. Have you got goosebumps in reading that? That's just an amazing truth of the gospel to read this morning. Amen. Amen. The greatest gift of all, let's start in verse 32. He, that is God the Father, who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. The greatest gift, Jesus. Jesus, the greatest gift. But why, why would God do that? Why would God the Father give up his only son? Why would that happen? And the answer is because God created us to know him and to be known by him, to love him. And so here we see this ultimate gift, the very first present that we're unwrapping this morning in this gospel passage, Jesus himself. God chose to do this, to redeem us back to himself. Isn't that amazing? Because we rejected God. We rejected God's glory and we we instead chose to do our own thing. And in our rejection uh, of God, We've taken on um, things of the world as an answer to our issue. And we try and seek satisfaction out of the things around us. You see, the story of our sin is that we've exchanged God and his glory for the glory of stuff. We would rather live in our world with all of its treasures rather than have God. And so, in our rebellious state, God reaches out with a rescue plan. We are deserving of death for our rebellion, but God in his grace and in his mercy provides a way and he forgives us for the punishment of that rebellion. You see, sin has to be punished. Sin can't go unpunished. Imagine if God just said, oh, you know, we'll, we'll just sort of sweep it under the carpet, all that, all that rebellious things and stuff that you've done, we'll just sweep it under the carpet and forget about it. It would be like me... Uh, coming around to the Grant's place, you know, they've got a, a, a nice four-wheel drive that I'm a little jealous of maybe, and I decide to steal it off them. And I go and take their Prado and I drive it around the place and I, I crash it into a few things and I end up destroying their vehicle. It's not mine. And so I end up in front of the judge at court. And there I am, pleading my case... I know that I've done the wrong thing. I've just totaled someone's car. And the judge just says, you know what, Dale, you're a good guy. You've done a few good things. You know what, we'll just just forget about the damage that you've caused and we won't worry about it. Um, Just just forget about it. We'll just sweep it under the carpet. Don't worry about it. You get off scot-free. Could you actually imagine that happening? 
Like, maybe in our broken judicial system, we, you know, sometimes there are some dodgy things that do happen. But on the whole, a society in general, there would be an uproar if something like that happened, especially on a grand scale. And so, God can't just sweep our sin and our rebellion and rejection of Him under the carpet. Sin has a punishment and it needs to be dealt with. And so here we see God the Father did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all. Jesus, the greatest gift. For us to receive God's forgiveness, for us to exchange our rebellion, or for God to, re- to exchange our rebellion for his righteousness, sin needed to be dealt with. And the amazing message of the gospel is that we see in here, this first gift that we're unwrapping, this gift of Jesus is, is just that, that he was born... He was born as a baby, but he grew and he lived and he died. He was born to die. And he lived that perfect life and he died in place of us. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And Paul, in his letter to the Romans, goes on in that verse, in verse 32, if you keep reading, he says... How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So our first gift is Jesus and the forgiveness that comes through him. The second gift that we see here in this same verse is that God will freely give us all things. Because if he's given us Jesus, if he has given us the greatest gift that there could ever be, why would he not give us everything else as well? If the Father was willing to send the Son to take our punishment, then why would he withhold anything else? He's given us Jesus, the greatest gift. And Paul goes on to say that he's given us everything else as well. God will go to any lengths to bring us into his family. So Paul's not saying here that, this is, that we should expect or uh, to wake up with a Ferrari wrapped uh, un- underneath the Christmas tree this Christmas. What Paul is saying is that the, f- the Father was willing to give you everything. He's gone to every length to bring you into his family. All for the ultimate outcome, to give him glory. So no matter what trial or difficulty you might be going through, we can know that this is a gift of the gospel to us, that he has freely given us all things, that that we can turn a situation back to giving him glory. You see, the gospel is not just us being saved out of our rebellion. It's also the transformation that we go through for the rest of our lives. This ongoing work in our lives as we are conformed and shaped and moulded to be more and more like Jesus. So it doesn't matter what we've done in our past. It doesn't matter if we've been a thief or a liar or we've... uh, been caught in adultery or we're an addict or we're a sinner to any degree, whether our heart is hardened against God or not, we are all saved by his grace and we're moulded into his likeness as we seek to follow Jesus. What a gift that we see just in this one verse. This amazing. But let's keep reading because there's more. So in verse 33, we're going to open up another gift here. And it says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. This is really cool. No one can bring an accusation against you if you are a Christian. 
I picture, you know, even if Satan could come and approach God and accuse you or me of uh, the sin that we have in our life, then, you know, Satan is there. I can just picture, you know, Satan saying, look at this person. Look what they've done. It's like he's found this hidden sin that I've been hiding and he takes it and he shows it before God like dirty laundry. And, and Satan's there accusing but Jesus, uh, Jesus says, that's already been dealt with. That is true, not denying that we have sinned and we have done wrong uh, rebell- in our rebellious state against God. But the punishment has been dealt with. It's been paid for. It's been dealt with in Christ's death on the cross. You see, our sin wasn't just swept under the carpet hidden for the devil to, you know, rat through the filing cabinet and find a a file that's got your name written on it and and pull it out and go, oh, look, I found this. Yes, I'm going to accuse this uh, person before God with, look at all the lists of things that they've done wrong. No. No, our sin has been dealt with on the cross. And so Paul is reminding the, the Christians here and us as well, be reminded today. He says it by asking a question. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who shall bring a charge? And then in verse 34, he says it another way. He says, who is he who condemns? He asks this question, who is he who condemns? Is there anyone who can condemn God's chosen people. And I think about it a little bit this way. Now, I'm missing the young people down the front row this morning. Where have they all gone? Jacob, you're the closest person, so can you come up here and help me out? This is a, a scroll, a list of, uh, of your sin, Mr. Jacob. I want you to unravel that and unroll it. You see, we're going to unroll this great big list. It says, your sin list. And maybe you could picture... That this is your sin as well, maybe. You might have to go lengthways, Jacob. That's it. Roll it out. List of our sin. Remembering it's not only the list of the things that we do wrong, but we're also rebellious in our human nature. Okay, just pausing there. Just it. Just hold that there. There we go. That's a pretty big list, isn't it? List of our sin. Massive, the ways that we have wronged God in our brokenness. And if we get to the bottom of the list, keep unscrolling, Jacob, because there's something special at the bottom written in red letters. That's it. You can uh, just roll it out. Kick it down the the aisle with with your foot there. That's the way. Keep it going. It's right at the bottom, all the way to the end. Look at the list of wrongs that we have before a holy God. And right at the bottom, what does it say? Read it out in big words, Jacob. Anyone else see it down there? Paid in full by Jesus. Paid in full. You see, we are broken before a holy God. We, in our rebellion have wronged God in so many different ways. Yet the gospel gift is Jesus has paid it in full. Isn't that true? Beautiful, isn't it? So Paul is reminding us here that our sin has been dealt with. It's been paid in full by the blood of the Son on the cross. And so when the devil comes to accuse us, Christian, we need to respond not by saying, oh no, he's found that out again, he's accused me again. No, it's been paid in full. And Paul reminds us here, who can condemn us before God? No one, not even the devil. Punishment for our sin was met on the cross. Our sin has been dealt with. Once and for all. What a gift, hey? What a gift in the gospel that we find at Christmas. Paid in full. We need to remember that. We need to remember 
as Christians not to walk in guilt and shame, but to walk together as his people who have been set free from sin. So we need to confess our sin to one another, James says, and share the journey. Walk together. Don't be ashamed. Jesus has forgiven you. What a gift. Let's keep reading. Not only uh, is there no one who can condemn us, but in verse 35, Paul goes on to say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? What can separate us from God's love, Paul says? Knowing our gifts that we have in Christ is truly important for us as Christians. Knowing that our sin is paid through Christ's death and that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ is been paid for. Anything that could separate us from God's love has already been dealt with and paid for. What a gift. Nothing can separate us from God's love. I want you to picture, uh, just as an illustration, uh, um, I want you to picture a really hot summer's day. I know that's probably not hard to imagine because we've been going through a few just in the last few days, but picture a hot, hot day and you are a concreter. Just imagine that. Imagine uh, that you're, um, you're, you've got a massive uh, slab that needs to be poured during the day and it's going to be hours and hours of work. So you're up early, you're there ready to go, all the form work's been done, it's ready to pour the concrete, the trucks are arriving and, uh, and, and you've got a massive day ahead of you. Um, you're on the screed, the boss has said you're the one screeding it, so you're bending over all day long screeding, you've got your gum boots on and... You're just sweating and sweating and you're just so tired. The day goes on and, uh, and someone comes up to you knowing that you're probably getting a bit dehydrated and they give you this nice, refreshing Gatorade that's been straight out of the fridge. And that just encourages you and just, uh, you know, fills you up a bit and you get going again and back into the job because there's another cement truck coming and so back into it again and, uh, and it, the job goes on and you're just so weary at the end of the day, you're wrecked, absolutely wrecked. But the job's not finished and so they put up these lights to keep you going into the night and it's 10 o'clock at night and finally the job is finished. And you, you go to your car and you just collapse into the seat of the car just wishing that the day would be over. If you could just get home and just flop into bed, exhausted, it would be all good. But on the way home, you have to go past the the toll bridge. And it's one of these old school tolls where you don't have to, you know, have a card that, you know, automatically takes money out of your bank account. You actually have to put money into the tin. Some of you might remember them, yes? Yes? Okay, so you actually have to place money in. And here you are in your car, you're driving up, you've arrived at the toll and you have to put money in and you realise you don't have any cash. I don't know if you've ever experienced that before. Yep. And so you don't have any money and you're just pleading with the toll operator, please, can you let me, you know, I've had a massive day, you would not understand. Can you please just let me through? And the answer is no, you cannot go through. You have to pay the money. And here a person rocks up in the car behind you and they hop out and it's the same person that gave you a drink during the day at work and they give you the money that you are supposed to pay. And so the money goes in and you're so thankful, you're so gracious and you you just, you know, you can't thank them enough. And you you keep heading on the road, you go through the toll and you're heading home and you just want to get home so exhausted, you know, your hands are like bleeding from working all day long and you're getting home and all of a sudden, bang, bang, flat, 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 oh, flat tyre, got to be joking, you can't believe it. And so you get out, you're totally exhausted, your back is as sore as 
and you open up, you get the spare wheel out, you get the spanner, the wheel spanner, you start undoing the nuts and you realise that, oh, they're so tight. Some extreme mechanic with his rattle gun has rattled them up so tight that you can't undo them. How are you going to drive home now? Ah, oh. and all of a sudden, a car rocks up next to you. It's the same guy. And out of the boot of his car, he finds a metal pipe, somehow provides extra leverage on the wheel spanner, and you're able to undo, with his help, the wheel nuts, and you can change the tyre, and you finally get back into the car, and you just say, thank you so much. You have no idea. But then as you're driving home, you're round the last corner, home is in sight, and out of nowhere, this is for Ethan Grant if he's here, out comes a black pig out of nowhere in the bush and your car hits the pig and destroys the front end of your car. Absolutely destroys it. Not only does it destroy the car, but it bangs up your leg and you can hardly even walk. And so you hop out of the vehicle and you're just like, I cannot believe what has happened today. This is, and you're just so distraught. You sit beside the car and tears just start coming. And sure enough, the same guy turns up beside you, hops out of his car and picks you up and helps to carry you the last little bit home. And you finally get home and you just collapse into your lounge and you've just you've made it. You can't believe it. You, you, you collapse into lounge and you just absorb into the lounge and, and accept the rest that you've finally been given. This, this story, this analogy is probably not the greatest, but there's two things that I want us to draw out of that uh, little story today. The first is the helper, the person who came to help you along the way, the one who carried you home. And the second one is the promise of home and the promise of rest for a weary soul. You see, life is not without its trials. Uh, this life that we go through is not without its bumps along the road. It's not without setbacks. God never promised that we would have an easy life. But I want us to grab a hold of this gift in the gospel that we see here. Matthew puts it another way. Matthew describes what Jesus said as he was ascending to heaven. He says, the promise that I will be with you always, even till the end of the age. And that picture of Christ carrying you that last bit of the way, and in fact every step of the way, that picture reminds us about the home that we are heading to, the, 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 the promise of rest for that weary soul. And so here, Paul reminds us that there is nothing that can separate us from God's love. No trial, no tribulation, nothing that we will experience will be able to separate us from God's love. Isn't that a great gospel present to unwrap? And it's all so that we can bring glory to God. If we keep reading and finish the passage off in verse 38 to 39, I love these verses. Paul says, he says, For I am, can, I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor, present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Isn't that great? Nothing can separate us from God's love. No aspect of this created world can ever interrupt God's love for you. And it's like, I get this picture, it's like Paul has got the massive spotlight out and he's just searching through the whole of the world. He's searching through every nook and cranny of, of all dominions that God has made. And he's searching and he's asking the question, is there anything out there 
that can separate you from God's love in Christ? Is there anything possible? And the answer is a resounding, it would be absolutely, totally, and in all other ways, inconceivable. Isn't that great? There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God because Christ has paid the penalty. Christ Jesus is the greatest gift. So what gift could we unwrap this Christmas that could ever meet the gift of Jesus? Toys come and go. Money comes and goes. Fame comes and goes. Comfort come and go. Relationships come and go. But the gift found in Jesus will never be taken from us. The love of God found in Christ can never be taken from us. It's unshakable. It's what we lean on in trials. And it's what brings us home. That is what we celebrate this Christmas. The gift found in Jesus. The good news of the gospel. Let's pray.